Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Laura Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. It is ten o'clock PM here in Calgary, Alberta. Um Friday night, December the second. I'm glad to be here. This is Child Abuse Prevention. It's up to us. If we're on for thirty minutes, it's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And um yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these shows. I've sort of been um skipping a few there, there and um I've been really quite busy and also I had to go to a free account which only allows me to do one show per day. So some of my shows got cut out and I I was taking a bit of a break. But um yeah, this is a, an important show for me to do. I know I'm a I speak publicly about child abuse as often as I can and um I work full time and I'm busy so I can only do so much but I try to be a voice out here for people, you know, like for survivors and as well as for these children out here who are dying. And if they're not dying, they're in the hospital due to the abuse injuries that they're suffering and have suffered. And um, it's horrific, you know, it's absolutely horrific. And it's just mind-boggling, you know, people, it's not, you know, people talk about child abuse and say, well, you know, oh, it's just terrible that children are being abused, you know, but what is abuse, you know? Child abuse is torture, I mean, it's deadly. And if it doesn't kill a child physically, it will kill them spiritually. And it's got to stop, you know. I mean, we talk and talk about the issues, you know, people that are out here talking about this stuff, um, talking about the issues, you know, what what is it going to take to stop child abuse, you know. It's going to take a lot because there's a whole lot of really sick people out there who are abused children. I mean, parents, caregivers, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, siblings, um, you know, peers, you know, uh, children abusing other children, bullying, and teen, teen bullying and stuff. And, you know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I, you know, I guess when you're speaking about child abuse, you're really speaking about a, very much a moral issue. And general society doesn't care about moral issues. <laughs> you know? It's kind of like, you know, dog eat dog world out there for most people. There is a certain section of society that's not included in that, but they're very small portion. The rest of the world is really just trying to survive. And, you know, it's ridiculous that a child should be put in this situation when there's absolutely no need and there's no excuse. You know what I mean? Like people, like society just has this whole idea that, you know, you know they see these headlines out here. Because I know I see these headlines too. And especially me because I'm looking at this stuff. You know what I mean? We're looking at this stuff. The advocates who are out here trying to do something about this. You know, we're paying attention and we're looking at the headlines and we're, you know, you sit there and you say, why? Why are these people doing these things to their children? It's sheer ignorance and sheer, you know, a lot of it is the cyclical cycle of abuse, you know. It's the whole idea that these people are so ignorant and so mentally disturbed themselves or something. I don't, you know, whatever the case may be, abuse these children, whoever these children are, whether it's their own or somebody else's. You know, and it's just like, there's no excuse for that. There's no law tough enough for that. There's no punishment tough enough for that. Because there's no way you can ever make up for that. You can never, ever, uh, you know, make up for, for that type of, of a situation where a child's been abused. What, what's it going to What's gonna make up for that? You know? Like, there's nothing in the world. Like, there's not enough money and there's not enough punishment to make up for the pain and the torture and the suffering that a child goes through being abused and then have, if they live and survive, like myself, has to deal with as an adult, you know. And people say, oh, well, can't they just get over it? I don't know. Could you be raped and sodomized as a child and beaten and cursed at and kicked around and mistreated your whole life and get over it? I don't know. Some people do. They remain in denial. Um, that's one way of doing it. But so many of us can't be in denial, we're just in reality, we're just in the real world and, you know, we know what happened to us there's so many survivors out here like myself who who do know what happened to us and are not in denial, and so it's a tough road you know, and there's not enough money in the world and there's not enough punishment in the world, as far as I'm concerned that can make up for you know, for what children are, are suffering at the hands of people needlessly, and the reason I say this and the reason I get so, you know, adamant and frustrated with this whole thing is because abuse is a choice People are choosing to do these things to children. You know, and I, almost on every show, every show that I do uh, about child abuse prevention, I mean, I say this, and it's because it's reality. It's the truth. You know, I mean, it's not like a childhood cancer or a disease that comes on a child, or 
you know, sadly enough, a child born into a poverty-stricken area where there's no food and they just they die of malnutrition and the parents love them but they can't feed them. And I mean, that's a horrible situation where the child, you know, ends up with some sort of waterborne, you know, bacteria that kills the child as a very small, you know, infant and whatnot. Horrible, horrible situation. And um, and then you have ch- children being killed and murdered and tortured and maimed and, you know, abused in every way, verbally, psychologically, emotionally, um, sexually, you name it. Like, this is, there's no excuse for that. That is not something people have to do. People do not have to hurt their children. My mother did not have to hurt me, but she chose to do it. She chose to do that. She she wanted to hurt me, and she, she actually used to laugh, and she thought it was great. Uh, there's a lot of sick people out there in the world who think it's wonderful to hurt children. There's... You just I've talked to people who have actually said to my face the most sick sickest things and I'm like, Hey, and you're not wearing a straight jacket, you're not sitting in some sort of an asylum where you should be to keep our children safe, you know what I mean? Like this is ridiculous. Like the attitudes that people have towards children is all wrong. And I will argue with somebody and I will continue to speak out, you know, and we all need to be doing that. Like, I don't care who doesn't like the fact that I stand up for child rights. I really don't care. I don't care who doesn't like the fact that I write about child abuse and I and I write in everybody's face about it. I really don't care. <laughs> Too bad, because you know what? These abusers out here really don't care either, and they're more than happy to keep on and continue on abusing their children or somebody else's child. And this makes me sick to my stomach. You know, and this is what keeps me going on this, fight to stop child abuse, you know, and it's it's got to happen, you know, but it's going to take generations, whole generations, because these next set of children that are growing up right now, they're not going to get the message, and in, in about 20 years, you know, they're going to have their first children, their children, they're going to kill and abuse their children, or just abuse them, do whatever they're going to do to them, and they're, we're going to see so many of these kids uh, in the papers, in the news, um, talking about their jail sentences and their their uh, prosecution and their their trials, and you know, yeah, these are these kids that are in kindergarten right now and first grade, second grade. They're not going to get the message that that there that there's no excuse for hurting a child. There's no reason to hurt a child. There are really good healthy parenting mechanisms and skills that people can can get a hold of. Good coping mechanisms, good coping skills. There's 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 help out there for families, you know. And I I grew up in the in the most ridiculous situation, and a, a lot of my friends grew up in the same type of homes. And I mean that's why I write my stories, a life of death and redemption. You know, um, that's really looking back at the at, you know at everything. Uh, La Vida Juvies is just a real good example of one summer with my friends who were almost all of them being abused, if not all of them, um, in some way or another, sexually or verbally or physically abused. And we all grew up in the same type of neighborhood, same type of ignorance, same kind of ill treatment towards children. And people would expect that we wouldn't carry on. You know, I don't have children because I can't have children because I was raped and sodomized as a child. But, you know, I don't know. Did some of my friends actually carry on the cycle? I believe that some of them did. And the cycle of abuse, you know, that's just the whole issue. People grow up in these situations and they just think, well, this is the way we treat people. This is, you know, a, 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 a boy watching his, his family fall apart around him. You know, maybe there's no father in the home, or if there is, maybe the father or whoever the, the male figure is in the home is abusive. Or if there's no man around and the woman is abusive, the, these children pick this up and they will carry it right on into their own lives if they don't get some help and they don't realize that it's incredibly wrong and, and it shouldn't happen, it never should have happened to them, and it certainly shouldn't happen to any other child. But there's people out there that say, well, didn't hurt me. I was abused and didn't do nothing to me. Well, that's sheer ignorance. Because I tell you, I was abused and it certainly did something to me. <laughs> you know, and I detail it very clearly in all of my books. Um, because I want people to know. I want the public to know what an abused child will go through. You know, I live to tell, I live to tell the story. You know, so that's why I tell my story. It's not about money. It's not about trying to get money or trying to get fame. It's, it, what I'm hoping to do is after I'm dead that someone will somewhere will see my books and realize how important they really are because I'm not holding anything back and I'm just telling it like it is. You know what I mean? Like how it was and how it is for me as an adult survivor of child abuse. 
because I want people to know the damage done. Ruined lives, you know. And there's other survivors out here talking too. It's great. I, I know a whole lot of them and am hooked up with a lot of them because of what I do. And um, it's wonderful. It's awesome because we need to be the voices out here for these poor little kids that are going to die tonight. <laughs> Nobody will be able to hear their stories except for in the paper tomorrow and then they'll be forgotten about, you know, except for by the by the few of, of us who actually care enough to remember these poor little kids, you know. But the, the rest of the world's like, oh, well, you know, not my problem. I'm having lunch, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to buy my new car tonight. Well, good for you. Um, that's great. Well, we all have to live. I have a life outside of this too. But the issue is is that I, I don't forget about these little kids. You know, because it's the same it's the same as people who support uh cancer research for, for especially for childhood cancer and whatnot. There's a lot of support and a whole lot of money and a lot of funding going into childhood cancer research and whatnot. That's great. That's wonderful. I'm all for it. I support it too. But the issue is nobody cares about abused children. It's like, oh, do we have to hear about that? We don't want to hear about that. You know why? Because it's going on in their own homes. People are slapping their own kids around, beating on their children, emotionally damaging them, psychologically damaging them, uh, sexually damaging them, you know what I mean, in every way. And, you know, so of course they don't want to hear about it. That means they have to straighten up their own behavior with their own children or somebody else's child. You know, it's child abuse runs real deep and it runs real rampant. <laughs> People are abusing children all the time. And we really need the level of education to come up. You know what I mean? Like, we need to start educating children, like, grades, like, like pre-kindergarten <laughs> through uh, high school. You know what I mean? That they don't graduate unless they take these courses, mandatory courses in, in, in parent -child, healthy parent-child relationships. And ways of, of dealing with things without violence, uh, stopping violence towards uh, against children, child rights, um, and all this stuff. So that when these kids graduate and they have children, they'll know that you know you, you don't punch a child in the in, in the face and break their nose. You know you don't break your children's bones. You don't beat your children, burn your children, stab your children. You don't kill your children. You don't choke your children. You don't shake your children. Shaken baby syndrome. You don't beat on your children. You don't starve them. You don't put them in a room and lock them in a room for 10 weeks and leave and leave them without water. And You don't sexually use them in any way, any any type of sexual abuse. No, not at all. Not at all acceptable. This, these kids need to know this. You know why? Because these kids that are graduating right now are the next set of abusers. <laughs> what a drag, but that's the truth, you know. That's the honest to God truth. How many of these kids that are coming out of these high schools right now, in the next three or four years, are going to have kids, and we're going to, and they're going to end up in, in some sort of court situation because they've abused a child, whether it's their own or somebody else's. This is really sad, but this is the reality. This is the this is the reality. Why? Because nobody got to them in time to tell them that no, you don't do that to a child. You don't do that to a child. I don't know how anybody can sleep at night, but because it's cyclical, see. It's something they learned. They either picked it up from they picked it up from somewhere. It's a disease. It's very much an epidemic. It's a disease. The way that people treat children is a disease. You bet it is. Because children are are not to be abused. But every day people are abusing children. You know, so it's it's really it's it's up to you and me. That's why I called the show, you know, child abuse prevention is up to us because it literally is gonna be up to us to change this. All of us, you know, we're all going to have to get involved in some way, you know, it, whatever way, whatever capacity that we can, you know what I mean? Like we all, you know, most people have to work. And it's not like advocates get paid money to do what they do, very few and far between. The rest of us out here are just making as much noise as we possibly can, and I figure, hey, why not? You know, I've got nothing better to do with the rest of my days than make noise about child abuse because I'm really angry about what happened to me as a child. I'm pissed off. You bet I am. I'm really about what my parents did to me. They should have loved me and cared for me. They should have treated me right. They should have nurtured me and told me they loved me and that that I was their a good girl and you know, and it was great and, and brought me up in this you know nice environment. You know what I mean? It, it has nothing to do with money or finances or you know how many toys a kid has. It's about dignity and respect. You know. And um, you know, showing a child that yes, they do, they do have every opportunity, just like every other child, to go out there and succeed and 
you know, and that they that that they are worth something to the parents, you know. But so many children are not going to experience that. You know, they're going to be they're going to be treated like I was as a child, just treated like a piece of of shit, you know, just to be discarded, just to be stomped on, you know. And I mean, that's really pathetic, but that's the truth of it. And you know, it's it's really really wrong. And then you have that's the whole issue with cyclical, you know, the cycle of abuse, right? Because it runs in families and it runs in generations, right? And so then you have family members going, well, you know, you were a bad kid. You deserved that. Well, yeah, right. I deserved to have my head bashed in, right? That's right. I deserved to have my blood spilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and oh, and the rape and sodomy, I guess I deserved that too. I deserved all the name callings and all the, the horrible stuff being thrown out of the house. Oh, yeah, I deserved that too. No, I was a good kid living in a really bad family. And that's really sad. You know what I mean? Um, so many kids out there will survive or, or not survive worse than what I went through. And so that's why I'm like, you know, I don't mind being a voice for these kids out here, you know, because little babies tonight are going to be killed at the hands of their parents, caregivers. Someone's going to get a hold of these children and kill them. Or if they're not killed, they're going to end up in the hospital due to the abuse they suffered. Or they're just not going to be known about it all. They're going to lay in their rooms like I did, bleeding or bruised or battered or whatever, you know, and nobody's going to get that child any help, right? And so, you know, it, it's got to stop. I pay for this. You know, I do really well. Like, I have to admit, you know what I mean? I don't sit there and, and, and try to, to put off to people that I don't do really for coming through what I came through. I really do really well. I mean, I can hold down jobs and I can, I can you know, I can pay my bills and I, I can do things, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm in debt and I do need to work on getting my debt down. I got I got bills to pay. It's very expensive to live up here where I'm living. But... I can manage, I can make it, you know, where so many people can. So many people who have been abused and, you know, in similar ways that I have been are psychologically messed up and they can't even hold the job down. You know, they can't focus, they can't function for through the day. Whereas I can still deal with the flashbacks. I can deal with the stuff, you know what I mean? Whatever's coming my way, it's like, oh, I, I can deal with it, I'm all right, you know? And um, it's a matter of me just not killing myself. That was the big. Uh, per- that was the big issue. <laughs> it's like, well, if I can manage not to kill myself, I can stay here for a little bit longer, uh, because that was always my mission: was to end my life, to be out of the pain that I was in. And so many survivors will end up in that position. Two of my brothers killed themselves. Right? Um, you know, it's really horrific. Right? We need to stop this mess. And so many siblings and so many other people in these cyclical families where there's cyclical abuse, familial abuse, on and on and on, you know, they think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's society today. That is a clear picture of society today. People will turn a blind eye to the issues of child abuse. Oh, yeah, but they will support childhood cancer research, you know, or or diabetes, childhood diabetes research, but they will not support a dime towards the prevention of child abuse. And this pisses me off because, you know why? Because it's happening in their own homes. They probably know someone who is either molesting someone within the home, beating on someone within the home, emotionally, psychologically damaging someone within the home, you know what I mean? And it, it runs too close to home. It runs too close and it runs too deep. And that means they would have to confront the abuser. Who's the abuser? Probably mom or dad. Or maybe it's grandma or grandpa. Maybe it's aunt uncle, right? Maybe it's sibling. Maybe it's a cousin. It's, it's all family BS, you know? And nobody wants to hold anybody accountable for what they do. And that's where I drew the line. I held my parents accountable. I was like, you guys were accountable and you are accountable for what you did to the family. And I told them this as an adult, and I'm glad I lived to be able to tell them this to their face. Um, Because I'm telling you, the courts held them accountable too, but did they do what the courts told them to do? No. My parents were brought up on charges, child abuse charges. And, you know, the issue is, you know, did did it help? No, because that was the 1960s, you know. That was back in the days where, well, you know, I guess... Try not to hurt your children. Be good to them. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, when you got two mentally ill, psychologically deranged, violent parents raising a bunch of kids that they didn't want, and things are going to go well? I don't think so. You know? So, you know, it, it's really, really unfortunate that, 
this is this is society today. You know? It's like, well, we can't turn grandma and grandpa in, you know what I mean? Like or we can't turn mom in or we can't turn dad in or we can't hold them accountable, you know, because who's gonna pay the bills or who's going to cook the steaks <laughs> next summer at the barbecue? You know. It's like, well, you know, that's that's what's going on. Protecting abusers. People will always protect abusers. You know why? Because it's their parents, or it's their it's their husband, it's their wife, it's somebody they know, it's their best friend down the street who's beating on their children or sexually using their children. They may even suspect it, but are they going to get that child any help? Probably not. And you know, I I I have so many instances of of, of situations where I look back and I'm thinking, wow, as a child, I saw so many children being abused, not just myself, and so many people just let it go. Let it slide under the rug. And I'm not talking a spanking. I'm talking people beating their children with pipes and, and big old wooden uh, sticks. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's abuse. You know what I mean? And that's what my mother was doing to me. You know what I mean? But the issue is is that other people were doing this to, to, to other children too. And I was a witness too. And it, this was just my life. You know? And I basically just thought everybody was abusing all the children. You know what I mean? Because I grew up in this, and most of my friends were abused. And so was there any help for these kids? No. Was there any help for me? No. And there's a whole society that says, oh, stop whining. Oh, stop, you know, what are you whining about? You know, oh, I'm whining because I'm in a lot of physics because of the abuse I suffered as a child. And I don't want to have to do bloody pain pills and, and pain medication until I really need it when I'm about 80 years old if I live that long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. This is ridiculous that I got to suffer physical pain, emotional pain, psychological pain because people decided to hurt me just because they couldn't control their anger. Well, actually, they could have. They didn't want to. They were using that anger as a way to control. So in other words, they chose to do what they were doing. There was no situation where they were out of control. It was that's uh, I study anger and I also study abuse, right? So I know all about it. But the issue is, is you know, people, yeah. Yeah, just use their kids for punching bags just to control the situation. Well, that's wrong. You know, or sexually using children just because they whatever for for whatever reason, which there's many. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. And yet society says, "Oh, well, no big deal. Stop your whining." You know, but oh yeah, when it comes time to support the childhood cancer stuff, oh well, we got to get right in there and support that. We got to have walks and runs and we have to like give about $500 for that. And, well, what about these abused kids out there? You know what I mean? Like, do they not count? Do we not count? Well, we do. And that's why I'm I'm a voice for them. I'm a voice for all of them. And I will continue to speak out. You know, I'm not, um, have no plans on shutting up anytime soon. Um, or, or stopping writing or anything else, you know. I have a, a lot of things on the go, but this is so important to me because I would, you know, I want to be just another voice saying no more. No more silence, no more shutting up. I don't care who wants to hear about abuse. I'm talking about it, you know, because there's too many people out there who just want to keep it all silent and shut shut away under the carpet, just like the, that old cliche, you know, and that's the truth of it, right? Nobody wants to hear about it. My my family certainly doesn't like the, the living members, which there's not very, very many of us left, doesn't like that I've come, come out publicly with my story, with our story. I I really don't care. I, I don't like the fact that they didn't stand by me and protect me as a child and that they have been nothing but um, abusive to me as an adult. That's why they're out of my life, you know. It's like, I don't care if if it hurts them that I wrote. Yeah? It hurt me more to be abused than it's hurting them to know to, to have the truth be told. Too bad. You know what I mean? Like, this is the issue. You know, people... Well, we can't, you know, we can't do that. Then everybody will know about that, that mom was this way or that dad did this. And, you know, it'll bring shame upon the family. I don't care. You know what I mean? The shame is not mine. It certainly belongs to the abusers. And this is society's attitude. Oh, do we really have to know about that? It's like, yes, we do. You know why? Because tonight there's going to be little kids dying needlessly at the hands of some very sick and twisted people who, for whatever reason, can't figure it out, that children have the right to life. And they have the right to protection, to safety, to to shelter, to to every to, to having their needs met. Every every single need that, 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 that adults have. 
they even have more. They actually have another right that, that actually adults don't even have. Um, and they have the right to, to education, the right to health care, the right to life, the right to a loving, caring, nurturing environment. That's an actual right of a child. Every child, every child deserves that, you know. And if we don't stand up and uphold it, it then it doesn't mean anything, you know. And so many people just, I don't know, are so sick and twisted. And there's people out there tonight raping children, beating children, burning children, stabbing children. This makes me so sick, you know, that people would do this. And I don't know how they can live with themselves. I really don't. It's a mental illness. It has to be some sort of psychological illness because I don't know how you can get through the next day knowing that you've done that to a child. You know, I don't know how my brother went on to live another how many years after he raped and sodomized me and sexually used me. I don't know how he could live with himself. I don't know. I guess he couldn't because he killed himself. <laughs> you know, 13 years later. 12 years later, actually. So, you know, I don't know how he could live 12 years with that knowledge. Well, you'd have to be pretty sick and twisted. You know what I mean? And my mother was sitting there, you know, thinking, oh, there's nothing. It was not her fault. She wasn't abusing the children. Right. You know, my mother was guilty with a capital T. Guilty. You know? And it's like, you know, people sit there and justify the way that they treat children. And, you know, that's this has got to stop. And it starts with education. And education is the number one way to stop child abuse. Because laws don't matter. People get out, you know. People people do half the time and they're out out for good behavior and whatnot. Then they don't care because half of them spend half their life in, the, in jail anyway or prison. So it really doesn't matter to them. And they'll just come out and they'll just continue to do what they're doing, right? But what we, what we really need is education. We need to get all of these kids out here educated so that by the time they graduate, you know, in about, I don't know, 12 years or whatever, um, they will have some knowledge on what not to do and what to do and how to properly bring up a child and how to be, you know, how to how to uphold child rights, you know, the rights of the child. We really need this. There's always going to be some sick individual who will abuse a child, but the thing is, is we could cut down a lot of that cyclical cycle of abuse if we could reach these children. Education is absolutely the number one way to go. Support education in your local schools, about child sexual abuse, about abuse, period, domestic violence and family family violence and violence and bullying. You see a school that's got a program going on, support it, you know. Um, do whatever you can, right, within your own neighborhoods, within your own areas, you know, to get involved, like, where you can. That's what I'm kind of working on myself, right. And so, you know, get, be, get out there and be a voice, right. And if you know a child's being abused, you know, get that child some help. People say, well, it doesn't do any good to make the call. Well, it doesn't do any good to not make the call either. You know what I mean? And not that they're going to end up in a better situation. Because really, a child can go from an abusive home into an abusive situation in foster care. So it's not the answer. But the answer is education. And we really have to reach these young people. So what? if we started now, we would still have another 12 years of, uh, of abusers coming out. It's 12 more generations. But but if we started in the, in the next five years, I mean, really, within about 20 years, we could we could stop a lot of abuse, right? And it'd have to be kind of like worldwide, you know what I mean? But, hey, we could start where we are, North America, you know what I mean? And it needs to be done. Support the stuff in the schools, absolutely. Education is the key. So have a great night, everybody. Take really good care of yourselves. I might be on this weekend. I do have shows scheduled. I should be on. Um, I might be on tomorrow, but I know for sure I'll be on Sunday night. And Monday, I'll uh, be taking Monday morning off, but I'll be back on Tuesday morning with one child to be survivor to another. Have a great weekend. Take really good care of yourselves. You know, do whatever you can. Watch out for these kids out here. There's a lot of sick individuals. And if you're a parent, you learn how to protect yourself. You know, if you're a parent and you have children, you don't think it's a safe world living, living with these rose-colored glasses on because it's not safe. It's a scary freaking place with a lot of perverts and psychos running around. Be very, very cautious. And watch out for who who wants to be around your children, especially family members, right? Because those are the ones that are abusing children. So have a great night, everybody, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.